Hey everyone, welcome back to UniXTCG, and today we're going to hop into our next video for the OP03 Pillars of Strength Breakdowns. And uh, today it's going to be black. Why? Because yellow is the new color and everybody wants to know about that. And it does hit the scene with a splash, but black is going to get its second set of cards and it actually is going to get some elements that really help it pop into the metagame. So, or hopefully, you know, the JP and US metagames are generally different, but we're going to see. We're definitely going to see. So we're going to dive into that. Uh, a couple calls to action. I just want to say that uh, if you guys want to help out the channel in a great way, uh, a little push I'm doing, I have a channel, UniXDB. That's where I play all my Dragon Ball games like uh, Dragon Ball Z Doken Battle, Dragon Ball Legends, Xenoverse, Fighters. And um, I'm trying to get that to 1,000 subscribers because that's a huge revenue stream. A lot of people love those games. And if I can get that monetized, I will be one step closer to being fully sufficient and making my own way as a content creator. So if you want to go down in the description, it's in my link tree. I'll also put it in my description. I'll put it in the title card here. Just go over there because if literally 20% of my subscribers subscribe to that, I'd be monetized on that channel in literally 60 days or less. So please, if you want to help me out, I would love you guys and I'm going to continue, well I already do love you guys, I'm going to continue trying to make the best content I can. Past that, if you want to help this video out directly, all you got to do, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, hit that notification button and comment. And uh, yeah, exploring all corners of the universe X, all you got to do, click that link tree, check out the links. So with that being said, let's hop into the breakdown of these cards. Yeah. Sorry for the uh, blanket. Too much skin actually reflects some light and it changes the color of the green screen. All these editing things that nobody actually cares about. So, with that being said, let's actually talk about the leader. Um, the cool thing about Rob Lucci is that previously black was a hard control color. You uh, lower, it had an AB scheme as in like the A pieces lower cost on cards. The B pieces have payoffs because they destroy cards based off of cost. So you would have to find the A and B cards and then use them in sequence in order to get your best plays. Uh, certain cards were just flat out enablers like Tindrop, Secret Rare, Kuzon, who would just lower everything on the board by 5k, allowing every card to go crazy. Kobe could discard a card to destroy 8 drops for a cost of 3. Uh, Sakazuki for a cost of 6 to pretty much destroy anything in the game. And so that's just pretty much like that. However, in set 3, Rob Lucci, or as I like to call him, Rob Gucci, offers a very aggressive way to play. Because he has the effect, once per turn, your turn. You may discard two cards from your hand. When an opponent's character is KO'd, set this leader to active. So what this means is you can get dual attacks out of them. Uh, we all know how dangerous this can be based off of Kid. The only trade-off is that while Kid just plays three Dawn to untap, this guy is going to need to KO something, which is not hard to do in black. But the main difference is if your opponent has an empty board, Kid could Dawn up seven to 12 and swing once, tap three, trash card in hand, swing twice. If they have no cards on board, Rob Lucci will only be able to swing once because there's nothing to KO. However, the way this game works, generally there's gonna be some sort of weenie on the board, something that swung last turn that's tapped, and that means that you could Dawn up on Rob Lucci, swing, blow up that card, untap him, swing again. And the cool thing about this is that since he doesn't use a Dawn requirement to untap, he just actually trashes an extra card in hand, you could literally put up to two Dawn on him to swing for seven, which is a really good number versus leaders, and you're gonna be able to still have eight Dawn left over, allowing you to get those destruction effects off to be able to untap him. The other thing is, he has some very good synergy versus certain decks. Um, dual color decks get eaten up by him because you're able to blow up all these weenies that Laws plays, and then you're able to swing so many times that you put Law on a really bad point of pressure. But also against Whitebeard, once they hit that zero cost, you're gonna be able to really start pressuring your hands. Uh, Dawn this guy up to sometimes like things like nine. Um, well, maybe eight, probably the better one, but uh, yeah, you can pressure him up to like eight and then just start going crazy. Uh, if you pressure him up to, if you know you're trying to get cards out of their hand, you can even put him up to 10 and then swing with them, and then maybe swing on something that's tapped knowing it's going to die, and then you can either drain cards because they'll protect the thing not wanting it to get KO'd, or they KO it and you get to swing at their leader again for 10. So you put some really, really strong pressure on decks like White Beer, which is one of the reasons why this card is actually used. Now we're gonna move on. Here you got Spandam. Now Spandam, I know this card's in Japanese, but the effect is pretty easy. Uh, on play, you're gonna look at the top three cards of your deck, choose up to one, card with CP in its types, add it to your hand, trash the rest. 
Um, you're gonna find in this set that uh, black is gonna have a lot of synergy with putting cards the CP tag from the bottom or from your uh, trash to the bottom of your deck to get extra effects. So this is going to search a CP card and then you're going to be able to put the rest in the trash allowing you to get these effects off. Now, the next card we're gonna move on to uh, is cool for two reasons. One, this guy has the courage to get up every morning and walk out with that hairdo and that receiving hairline, props to you. But the other part is that this card is a very unique card because normally you don't bridge archetypes in this game. We're just not there yet. Archetypes can have synergy, but they don't get bridged. This is a straight bridge between set two and set three. Um, on play, look at three cards on top of your deck, reveal up to one navy card other than brand new, and add it to your hand, trash the remaining cards. So you're gonna be able to search cards from set two. Like if you're running, there's a, a couple ways you can run Rob Lucci. You can run Rob Lucci the Airdor format, or Airdor uh, version, which we're gonna talk about later. You can run him as mainly a primarily less RNG CP9 engine that doesn't run Airdor, or you can run it with a primarily uh, Navy list that has some CP package in it so you can still use um, Rob Lucci's, uh, well, you still use some of the effects that go hard. And if you're using that sort of deck, this is the actual bridge piece to it completely because you're gonna search your top three, hopefully get your Kuzan, your Borsalino, your, um, your, uh, your Sakazuki, and then you're going to be able to trash the rest of the cards, putting those CP zeros in your grave, or sorry, CP nines in your grave for other effects. So yeah, now moving on, we got a uh, Fakura. He's a three cost, uh, counter one, blocker, cannot be K-Ball effects. There's a whole lot of stuff that's good here. Him being a 3K is pretty, pretty neat. Um, he's going to be able to uh, withstand things like Robin, Vista, because he can't be KO'd, which is very, very good, even Whitebeard. Um, he has a counter one, so he's never gonna be dead sitting in your hand. There's just a whole lot of good things about this blocker. Very, very good card, three cost, and since he has the CP9 tag, he's gonna be able to be played from your grave for some cards we're gonna see later. Um, or by the top of your deck, which you're going to see later. Now, this next card, the plot is thick with this one. Uh, Khalifla, 4 cost 4k, on play, or she's a 2 uh, counter 2, which is good too. Um, on play, draw 2 cards, trash 2 cards from your hand, and then you give something minus 2. So the reason why this is good is because uh, it's a counter 2k, and you can cheat it out from the grave. So you're not going to be paying 4 for this very often. But when you do so, you're gonna be able to counter two from your hand, be like, nope, stop that, I'm blocking it. And then you can revive it with certain effects. Uh, and then you can draw two, discard two, give me minus two. And if you do that on your opponent's turn, you can have some very interesting plays with cards like Impact Wave, which goes up 4K and then destroys something in your opponent's field that's active with a cost of three or less. So this is gonna allow you to do some very good combo plays with things like uh, like against opposing law blockers. Your opponent swings at you and uh, you block with a certain card that we're gonna get to later, bring this guy back or bring this gal back, and then you do its effect, filter, searching for your better cards, dropping some dead cards, minus two on their law, they swing again, and you're like, okay, well, now I'm gonna use impact wave, tap two, go up 4K, I'm gonna blow up that law blocker so that you were ready for the pain next turn. So very, very, very nice. Uh, very, very nice synergy. And then we're gonna look at our alt art real quick. Yeah, you can see this. If you pull this, you know it's money. She's got um, plot in all the right places. And uh, it's just, it's gonna be a good time for you, your eyes, and your wallet, and other people's eyes. Maybe not so much their wallet. Look, it, the point is, it's gonna be money. Next, we're at the man himself, Blue Uno. Uh, he is a five drop 6K counter one, but he has Dawn one, give this card blocker. So uh, the important part is on KO, you can play a character card with four costs or less with CP in its type from your trash and arrest it. This is what I was talking about previously with Khalifla. You could guard yourself for 2K getting out of an attack and they swing again for a bigger number and you block with Blue Uno, knowing you're gonna get your Khalifla back to uh, do stuff. So this causes a huge chain. Like your opponent swings at you for six, you block with Khalifla. They swing at you with a boss card. You block with Blaino. Oh, you discard Khalifla for the 2K. Then you block with Bluno. Bluno brings back Khalifla. Khalifla draws two, discards two. So you're gonna get that filtering. Minus is two on something that you wanna kill. Then they swing again with something if they do and you can be like impact wave and I'm gonna destroy that. Very, 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 very cool. So this is a very strong card. Um, it's gonna allow you to cheat out quite a few cards. Uh, you unfortunately can't cheat out Kaku, or if you do play Rob Lucci, Rob Lucci, but you can cheat out the Blocker and Khalifla and spam them, so that's very good. Um, two out of three of those cards will get you further in your deck, and so all overall, very good card. He's gonna cost six the first time you play him, but he's gonna just be a one-cost investment every turn after that, so very nice. 
Next card we're gonna get over to is Kaku. Uh, this guy is a five drop 6K on play. You may return two cards, CP and its type from the trash to the bottom of your deck in order to KO something that costs three or less on your opponent's side of the field. Very low, but you guys already know that black is an AB type like I spoke about before. So you're gonna have enablers and payoffs. This is the payoff card. All you gotta do is lower that cost. Uh, if you lower the cost, this guy can have incredible range because he essentially has Kobe range. So if you're playing a version with Secret Rare Kuzon, yeah, you're gonna be able to destroy eight drops of this dude. Um, if you're playing one of the cards we're gonna talk about later, you'll be able to destroy six costs. There's just endless possibilities. A Suru or a Tashigi will drop this, will drop things to where you can uh, blow up five costs with it. So Kaku is that dude and his drip is immaculate. Next, we are looking at Isho, or as most people who watch the One Piece anime or you know read the manga would know him as uh, Fujitora, which is fun little trivia. All of the admirals have names that reside or correlate with a color and an animal. Um, Sakazuki is his real name, you know, the magma dude, but his uh, his uh, actual admiral name is Akainu, which is Red Dog. Uh, you have Borsalino, whose, uh, whose um, name is actually it's Kizaru, which is Yellow Monkey, and then you also have Kuzan, whose name is Aokiji, which is like Blue Pheasant or something. So they all have their real name and they have their um, their actual other names, their code names. Uh, in the future, we're going to get another Admiral, uh, quite kind of spoiler alert, you don't know anything about him, but Aramaki, and his name is Green Bull, so it's all just kind of cool. And there's even theories about like, you know, maybe Kobe one day is like Orange Crab or something. There's just a whole lot of theories going on, but the point is, You've low-key got this card. This is a beast. Don X1, he's an eight cost, nine K. Don X1, your turn, all of your opponent's characters get minus three to their cost. So for one Don, he's gonna be a 10K swinger and you're enabling all of your black destruction cards. Kaku will be able to destroy six costs or less, which is a great number because lots of six costs and lower are just good investments. Uh, on play, if your opponent has six or more cards in their hand, trash two cards from your opponent's hand. Very, very, very good. So you're starting to see more things. Rob Lucci can really put the hurt on decks like Whitebeard, but if you resolve an Isho for eight, and then you put two Dawn on Rob Lucci, and then you swing in with Rob Lucci, and you know, they're like, well, uh, crap, I have to, well, first I just discarded two cards out of my seven card hand. Now I'm gonna have to discard two more cards, to, or one more card at the minimum to, you know, not take that. Or, you know, if you're at that point, if you're swinging on Whitebeard, you might as well just stay neutral for six. So put up one Dawn, you know. Um, swing for six, they have to drop another card, KO something on their board by swinging on if it's tapped, and then you can swing again for 6K. So you just got four cards out of their hand while they're at zero life. And that's really hard to sustain. If they don't kill you the following turn, you now have to get to the next turn where you can be like, okay, I'm putting Rob Lucci up to 10. So good luck on that radical beam. Now I'm gonna swing at you for 10 with my leader. I'm going to swing at you for 10 with Isho. Now I'm going to swing at you or try to blow up something for four Dawn. And if I do so, I'm going to be able to untap Rob Lucci and swing at you for 10 again. Whitebeard can get really, really pressured by Rob Lucci if Rob Lucci goes off. And so this is one of those cards that just really helps with the matchup. But it's also cool because it says to trash two cards from your opponent's hand. It I don't think they choose on that one. I think it's like in Dragon Ball where some green cards say your opponent discards and some cards say discard a card from your opponent's hand. So you'll be able to randomly choose more RNG, RNG piece, but it's still pretty good. Um, it's always better when you can choose than when your opponent can choose. Uh, next, we're going to talk about a card that is seldom played in the deck. This is Rob Gucci himself. He is a six cost and he is actually going to have 7k power on play return two cards cp9 and it's tight from your trash to the bottom of your deck in any order this card uh, this character gains rush during the turn um so something you're gonna notice this card only has rush but rush is the best keyword in the game so it's not really just sitting here doing nothing but it's not here doing a million things either a lot of people who are especially looking at yellow are gonna know that this is essentially starter katakuri the only difference is you're kind of wondering, well, this guy costs more, but he only has 1,000 more attack. Well, from a dev point, dev like maker, dev creator, you know, developer standpoint, that's what I was looking for. This guy is going to cost more because he's not conditional. If you notice, Katakuri has to check to see if you have less life than your opponent, and then he gains rush if you do. So even though Katakuri is a four cost 6K, if your opponent and you have the same life, he doesn't get rush, which means that if you guys both have zero life, he is just a vanilla with no counter in hand. Rob Lucci should always gain rush. That's why he costs two more 
but has 1,000 more because he is not situational unless you just aren't playing the game right or your grave has zero CP9s in it. So that's why he's different. Um, also, his alt art, one of the coolest cards in the game, just looks so freaking good. I will definitely want one of these for my collection because I'm going to start collecting alt arts once I have more financial stability. So yeah, that's pretty much that. Now we're going to actually take a quick moment to talk about our partner, Mystic TCG, uh, a great place where you can actually order plenty of sealed product as long as you get there early enough. And then um, if you're just looking for a place to pay pick up stuff that's already out you know you can go to their site on tcg player order that i've got an affiliate link down in the description um but yeah let's just roll that and then we'll get right back to the content so let's talk about mystic tcg your one-stop shop for all your tcg needs on the site you can buy or pre-order plenty of sealed product for plenty of games just make sure though if you're pre-ordering to give it three to four months in advance to start looking because sometimes the product is indeed hot supply and demand you know and then if you want to buy singles go on tcgplayer.com there's going to be a link in the description where you can buy for the best value and if you want to sell cards or collections you can message them on their facebook site so you can get the best bang for your buck on any type of way you want to buy or sell cards and then while you're at it you can use the code unixtcg at checkout to get even more of a discount so hey what are you waiting for check out mystic tcg today all right so the first event we're gonna actually have is Air Door. If your Lyra has CP in its types, look at five cards from the top of your deck, play up to one character the cost of five or less with CP in its types, then put the rest in the trash. Trigger, play up to one black character card with the cost of three or less from your trash. Okay, so if you're playing the Air Door, it's all in or nothing. You're not playing this card at two, you're not playing it at three, you were playing it at four or zero. Because playing a card like this, you wanna get it as early as possible, which is turn two if you're going second, because you're gonna be able to tap out for four, play Air Door, and then play something, hopefully a Kaku, early in the game to get a very very big card on the board destroy something your opponent played in their first or second turn and then keep it moving um also late game when you have things like isha on board or if you play the 10 drop kuzan this card will be able to play out kaku and destroy six drops or eight drops for pretty much free so this is really good loads your graveyard searches up those cards but if you do play this you are locking yourself into a very rigid type of play air door is going to cheat out a lot of your things but at the same time you're gonna have to be playing way more of your cp9 because you want to make sure that you always hit with air door tapping four to whiff is probably just game it's just detrimental and you never want to do that and even some of the cards in the deck don't let you do that like if you're playing rob lucci which you very well may in an air door build because he's actually gonna have way more cp9s to deal with in the tra trash you don't want to ever whiff so that's the thing this introduces a very very cool type of play but it's more rng and rng piece and that is one thing that i don't really promote but it is pretty fun to play when it goes off i will admit now next you've got Rokugan, which is what I'm going to always call it. You will never hear me actually name it Six King Pistol because I dislike it. Um, there's just a point in the anime manga that it's depicting right here where Rob Lucci fighting this dude, he realizes that um, he can't harm Luffy with physical damage. And so using the techniques that pretty much prede uh, our predecessors to hockey, uh, he actually starts attacking luffy's organs with internal force essentially using chi in his body and that's this and it was really cool because luffy was like so scared he was like oh crap this actually hurts i gotta get away from this dude and there's one moment where like luffy is mid jump away from this man and then he stops and he looks down and rob lucci's tail actually has him i so wish he had his tail wrapped around him in here but rob lucci's tail has luffy and like rob lucci just looks to him straight in the eye lines up his fist and he's like oh and it just lays out luffy but then luffy gets up main character energy and he just pounds the crap out of rob lucci so hmm pause point being um this is a pretty cool card it's a gum gum rain in black and it pretty much the same exact issues with gum gum rain you can use it while you're tapped out but it's taking two cards of your hand gum gum rain and one other card which can be very detrimental to you i don't know living because you're getting rid of a card and unless you get rid of a zero cost counter you're taking away from your defense while you're defending yourself and you're also lowering your cards on him and the less cards you have in hand the easier it is for your opponent to do math and assign dawn correctly which goes a lot of ways long way so yeah use this as uh, take this with a grain of salt some people use this a lot of people don't it's one of those cards where i feel like it it's volatile you know you could defend yourself from one swing and then you just go down from four cards to two cards and your opponent's like ah two cards easy math so yeah and then the last card we want to talk about is uh we got tempest kick sky slicer it used to be one of the best cards in the deck now it's not and i'll explain to you why two cost ko or main ko to one of your opponent's characters with a zero cost 
up to uh, uh, or up to one of your opponent's stages the cost of three or less, trigger draw two cards. One, the trigger is insane. If your opponent hits you and it's a Tempest Kick Sky Slicer, you were drawing two cards, which is twice the amount of cards you would have gotten if it was just a 1K or 2K or a no counter. Um, very, very nice. However, when uh, set three came out, Whitebeard with Moby Dick being the focus was the best deck in the game, hands down. And this was the only card that could just straight up, if I'm not mistaken, only card, they could just look at Moby Dick and be like, get it under my face. And that made Rob Lucci and Black in general just a much better deck. Um, because it was able to mize the best deck in the format. Now that we're going to start off set three with Moby Dick being banned, I don't think that we're actually going to be able to see this card in the same light. However, if you are playing a very navy centric deck, one that's still more set two based than set three based, then this actually may be a good card still because the trigger will replenish your hand in a deck that has hand control issues. But then at the same time, once you have things like Kuzan out, this card will just straight up pay two to blow up five costs. So just imagine just paying two and blowing up a law blocker. And then your opponent swings in you and you're like, oh cool, draw two, sweet. So it is what it is. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is the primer like I did on yellow. And um, I'm excited to put this up. You may have noticed there's some new background music. Uh, my friend Savage X2, he has a SoundCloud that I'll put in the description. He makes all this stuff, it's Gucci. If you've ever heard any custom music on my channel, such as my uh, normal background music, which is Gohan's theme remix, or my uh, Dragon Ball Super superhero theme that's here in the intro, or the song that's been playing in the background, which is a remix of one of the One Piece openers, one of my personal favorites, or stick around to the end credits. I'm gonna, I change my end credits as well to have another part of this song that I chopped and screwed uh, out. Nah, more just chopped, not screwed. Uh, but I have that there. He's a really, really cool dude and he does commissions. So if you ever want music by him, just reach out. Uh, I can put you in touch with him. I can give you his business email and you can get something cool of your own if you're a content creator or you're a streamer and you want something. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoy. I want to see you guys in the next video, the next stream, wherever you want to find me in Universe X. Check the link tree. I got different quadrants and I will see you in the next video video we got a ban list video for dragon ball coming up because people want to hear me talk about that we got more one piece coming up uh we're gonna try to dive in some battle spirits but you know we're kind of way deep in the format waiting for set two stuff so we shall see thanks later oh and i'm kind of farming spider-man for the playstation 4 on the playstation 5 because the trailer for the second game is hype <laughs>